Hey guys, it's Amy here, and today I bring you my August wrap up. So as you guys know, I had a pretty busy August, what with moving house and going to festivals and lots of things were going on in August, so it was a bit mad. And so I only read six books. I mean, that's still pretty good, I think, considering the fact that I thought I would only read five books, I've read six, so that's really exciting. So grab yourself a cup of tea. This mug I am loving, it's from the lovely Sophie at Portal in the Pages. She came and visited me and she bought me some tea and a beautiful mug and I can't get over how beautiful this is. It's now my favourite mug. I've not drunk from any other mug since she gave it to me, so thank you very much, Sophie. So let's jump into today's reviews. I'm going to start with my lowest star rating first. First we have Decline and Fall by Evelyn Waugh. This one I don't really remember a lot of, so that's probably why I gave it such a low rating when I first read it. In fact, it could probably go down a star, maybe even two stars, because I can't really remember much of the story. It basically follows the story of a man named Paul Pennyfeather who gets kicked out of his uh, education because of indecent behaviour. He then realises that he has to try and make his way in the world, so he goes and gets a job in a school, and you follow him through a series of kind of bizarre and strange events throughout his life. Some of it I did find quite amusing but other parts were just a bit like uh, for me so it wasn't anything that kind of struck a chord or made an impression on me at all. I don't think I'd read anything from Evelyn Waugh again just because I didn't find it particularly engaging and I think I was just reading it whilst I was on my breaks at lunch and it was like the only book I had. A bit of a so-so read so there we go. The next two books I have to show you are closer to four stars but weren't quite there for me but not quite three stars if you get what I mean so we'll say 3.5 stars. The first one I have here is Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. This is actually my lowest star rating that I've given to a Daphne du Maurier book so far. This one follows the story of a lady who is fed up living in London with her husband and her children and their dogs and she's fed up of the light, fed up of her husband. She wants to go and kind of have some fun down in Cornwall. So she goes down to stay in their house in Cornwall on the coast and when she gets there she is informed by the local people that they are being plagued by a Frenchman who is kind of pillaging and stealing and just doing awful things around the coast and they don't know where he is or how he is managing to hide himself so well and kind of evade capture. As you can probably guess from the title, she does come into contact with the French man and they kind of end up going on some escapades together and it kind of rocks her life. I like the way this book explored the idea of having a kind of sexual awakening even after you have been married and had children and kind of the excitement that this woman experienced through meeting this French man and kind of joining him in his kind of pirating was really good and I really liked that element of the story. I just feel like in comparison to My Cousin Rachel and Rebecca this definitely wasn't quite up there for me in the Daphne du Maurier kind of realm of things. I'm still really glad I read it and I would highly recommend to any of those who really like Daphne du Maurier. It is a very interesting read, it's quite different I feel from the other books that I'd read from her so far. I like that actually since reading Daphne du Maurier there have been so many different kind of stories, especially Jamaica Inn, that one had a completely different feel and I really liked it. So yes, I'm very much enjoying kind of exploring Daphne du Maurier's work. So who knows what I'll read next. If you have any recommendations, let me know down below. And the other 3.5 star read for me was Autumn by Ali Smith. So this book has a lot going on. As you may know, this book was written last year during the time of Brexit and all of that happening in the UK last year. So a large element of this book is the idea of things being split and people being on different sides of things and kind of having to vote upon something, that, that kind of idea. The actual story follows the life of a woman named Elizabeth from when she's kind of a young girl right up until her kind of 30s I believe. It focuses in specific on a relationship that Elizabeth has with a man named Daniel who is quite a lot older than her, like he's a hundred years old at one point in the book. So the friendship with this man named Daniel blossoms when Elizabeth is a child because he lives next door to her and she ends up speaking with him. They bond quite strongly over the subject of art and he introduces her to lots of different artistic things. She then goes on to do a degree and that is all kind of weaved in with the story and the whole idea of Brexit and kind of not knowing where you stand in the world and, and all these kind of things. It's really hard to describe this book because there is a lot going on, so I hope that just made sense. Whilst I really enjoyed the ideas that were shared in this book, I just didn't feel I really fully connected to what was going on and the characters. I didn't really feel much for them. Some of it just felt a little bit disjointed to me, and so that's why I've given it the 3.5 stars. I am really looking forward to reading the next part that comes out this year, though, which is Winter, and I'm actually going to read it at the time that it comes out because I wonder whether I would have given this more, uh, like, a higher rating had I read it when it actually came out and it was kind of very relevant at the time, so we'll see. 
Moving on to the only four star book I have this month and that is Magda by Mieke Ziervogel. I believe I picked this one up on the recommendation of Simon at Savage Reads and I'm really glad I did. It was totally up my street, totally mine kind of thing. It's a World War II related novel and it's kind of a psychoanalytical portrayal of Magda Goebbels. So if you don't know, Magda Goebbels was the wife of Joseph Goebbels who was the propaganda minister for Adolf Hitler. Nearing the very end of the war, Magda along with Joseph and their six children were living in a bunker. Come the end of the war they obviously knew that they weren't going to succeed and Germany had been defeated and when they realised there was going to be no escape for them and whatever survival they had was going to be completely persecuted because of what they'd done alongside Hitler, Magda took her children and poisoned them, all six of them, and then committed suicide alongside Joseph. And so this book is a portrayal of her as a person, her growing up and the relationships that she had um, with her mother and then the relationship she had with her daughter. So it is somewhat non-fiction but it was obviously not word for word true because it's impossible to know all of the kind of personal conversations that she may have had with her mother or her daughter at the time. I think what this book does very successfully is just give a completely different perspective on a woman who you would just assume is just a completely beastly person and in the end yes she does come across as quite a beastly person but then you kind of learn how someone may have got to that point and that's what really interests me. Psychology and these kind of things really really interest me so this book was just spot on because it was like psychology plus World War II my like two favourite things so I really really enjoyed it and I would highly recommend it to anyone. I would say though, it, I mean it's really short but it is a very intense read. There are diary entries in here written from Magda's daughter whilst they're living in the bunker and how she has this kind of sense of foreboding of something that's just really bad is going to happen and that, just all of it, it brought me to tears on a number of occasions basically. So yes, if this is something that you would enjoy I would highly highly recommend it, it was really really great. Moving on to my five star reads and I have two this month, the first one is the lovely and beautiful Franklin's Flying Bookshop by Jen Campbell and illustrated by Katie Harnett. This one is just stunning. I've had it displayed on my bookshelf behind me there, that's where it's gonna live, and it was just fantastic. I don't often read children's books, obviously, because I don't have a child and like I don't often get sent them, but this was a wonderful thing to receive in the post. Physically, it is a beautiful thing to behold, and the story is just wonderful. My best friend Lydia, who I live with now, she works with children, so I'm gonna pass it on to her to see if she really likes it as well, because I'm sure she will. Here's just a little sneak peek of some of the beautiful illustrations, I hope you can see those. I'm not going to say any more about what this one's about just because I think it's nice to have it as a surprise because it's such a short story, I wouldn't want to spoil it for anyone. So yes, I would highly recommend picking this one up if you get the chance. The final book I have to share with you today is undoubtedly the best book that I've read in recent months. It was just phenomenal and that is Chernobyl Prayer by Svetlana Alexievich. This is a non-fiction book that takes a look at the Chernobyl power plant disaster that happened in 1986 and the kind of aftermath of that and how it affected not only the people living directly near it but it, how it affected the world basically. The whole book is basically interviews with people who were affected, people who were right by the reactor at the time, people who were kind of there to clean up, people throughout the years who have been affected in some way by the disaster. I can't even tell you how many times this book made me cry. It was like reading a World War II kind of Auschwitz book. That's the kind of comparison I have. That, like it was so harrowing and in fact throughout the book and the interviews that she gives with people they also reiterate that kind of statement that it was like they were gone to war. It was like they had been put onto rations and, and been told they had to evacuate and all these things when actually there was there was no one they were fighting. It was radiation and it was this disaster that caused all of this kind of disruption to them and their lives and then the world kind of in turn. It, it's such a interesting idea, the fact that this was all man-made, you know, they weren't fighting against men with guns or whatever. The thing they were fighting against was this unseen, invisible radiation which the majority of the people just didn't even understand that, that, you know, why do I have to leave my home? Why can't I eat the food that I've planted in the ground? Like, because it didn't look any different to them and they couldn't see radiation and so they didn't understand the kind of gravity of the situation and, and how it was all affecting their bodies and the brave kind of clean up people who were sent pretty much to the reactor to just shovel in all the stuff to kind of just stop the radiation coming out and kind of bury it all. It's just so incredible that, that something like this could happen and 
and the aftermath of it and the government and, and what was going on was just so uh, just so interesting to look at something like that that's happened in our kind of time you know within the last 50 years and and see how a kind of country and a government and the world can like behave in such a situation what happens to those people and the compensation and all these kind of things afterwards it's just incredibly interesting as i said the book is written primarily in interviews and they're all in first person kind of narrative and so you kind of read through these people and it just makes it even more like harrowing and heartbreaking to read it that way and to have it kind of told in that way it's just phenomenal i i can't explain it more than that i think everyone should read it it's just something that i think you know everyone should be aware of so yes this is a fantastic book i would highly highly recommend there we are those were all the books that i read in august i would love to hear what you've been reading let me know down below have you read any of these books what did you think of them as always i'll leave links to facebook tumblr twitter everything i've mentioned today down below i hope you're all having a fantastic day and i will see you soon bye <laughs>